Home Secretary Yvette Cooper has pledged to deport more than 14,500 illegal immigrants over the next six months. If successful, it will be the fastest deportation rate since 2018, when Theresa May was Prime Minister. Yes, so the plans will involve the expansion of two immigration detention centres and are being seen as an attempt to counter criticism that the new government's decision to scrap the Rwanda scheme has left the UK without a deterrent. Mm, well, uh, let's discuss this further now with our Homeless Security Editor, Mark White. Mark, loads of questions about this because, you know, how can we deport people, especially if they're not coming from, quotes unquote, safe countries? There's also talk about where these people are going to be stored in the meantime. We had a huge hoo-ha, didn't we, about things like the Bibby Stockholm and uh, all of that, mainly whipped up by Labour. So how's she going to do this? So these are the enforced removals of people who don't have the right to remain here. So only a fraction of them are actually people that come across the channel. The vast majority of illegal immigrants in this country are people that come on student visas, on tourist visas, um, have come into the country via other means and have overstayed uh, their welcome here and they are then working in the illegal economy. And some estimates put the number of people working in the illegal economy mm. as up to one and a half million people. It's absolutely enormous. Wow. Uh, so this is just a small drop <clears throat> in the ocean of that. Um, and the previous government as well was involved in going after those working illegally. Uh, we saw immigration enforcement step up their operations. In fact, I think we can bring you uh, some video that we filmed not that long ago out with immigration enforcement as they uh, raided a scrapyard mm. uh, in East London employing mm. uh, illegal people in that area. Now, that was uh, one of multiple uh, immigration enforcement raids taking place uh, on a regular basis. Um, and that is you know, something that immigration enforcement are trying to do, but they only have finite resources mm. to be able to do that. Also lumped into this are your foreign national offenders. So thousands of people languishing in our prisons who are foreigners who, when they've served their sentence, will be removed as well. Now, the previous government, as I said, was stepping up efforts to remove people. They removed 7,000 people last year, up from 4,000 the previous year. It's ambitious, but if... Yvette Cooper can manage to get 14,000 people removed, then it will be significant. So these deportations, we have no idea what the breakdown might be in terms of how they entered the country. So it could be that this is 14,500 students who've overstayed their visas. This could be 14,500 mm. people who've got in the back of a, a, a lorry at some point and are working in a car wash uh, near you. Uh, it's, it could be a number of different, different types of people. I, I think I can tell you for certain that a small proportion of those who are removed will be those who've come across the channel uh, illegally because that has been the breakdown uh, over a number of years now that the vast majority of people are these visa overstayers, foreign national offenders and the like. Now, that might change as the government says it's going to prioritise the processing of these people who are coming across the channel and then claiming asylum. So that might well increase but as Patrick alluded to uh, just in the uh, previous question to me you've got this issue of people who can't be returned to so many different countries Iraq Iran Afghanistan Syria Sudan Eritrea there are so many and that's not going to change no matter who is in government. Yeah, and, and it's that question of deterrence, <clears throat> specifically with the idea of the small boats. If you scrap Rwanda, also the Conservatives under the Illegal Migration Act had it so that you would never be able to claim asylum. But actually, Labour are going to let all of those people claim, at least claim for asylum, aren't they? They are, and they're, they're say, going to process them much more quickly, but... Uh, I think what will be the net result of processing them much more quickly is that there will be quicker decisions to effectively give people the right to remain in the UK, even if they decide that you can't gain asylum, you have no right really to asylum, because you come from any number of these countries, some of which yeah. I've just listed, we can't return you to these countries, so you'll get leave to remain in this country anyway, as good as asylum. And, and one of the issues is, uh, when we're talking about asylum claims, is that even if there's a no to begin with, you can go through the court system, you can appeal. Are they going to try and streamline that or cut it back in one way or another? 
Well, they're, they're as restricted by the way in which our legal system operates as the previous government was. And they'll rapidly find that to be the case because, uh, as you say, you know, with asylum applications, even foreign national offenders, they, the number of foreign national offenders that get released from prison and then uh, under things like, you know, the UN human rights legislation on the right to a family life are able to successfully appeal the decision to return them to Jamaica or wherever it might be, um, and they get leave to remain anyway. It's very frustrating for governments, and this government, like the last, will find out just how frustrating it is. Mark, I'm, I'm a bit confused, because if you arrive in this country by irregular illegal means crossing the channel that is written into law as patrick said mm. and you're but everyone who does that is allowed to claim asylum then is there such a thing as an illegal migrant under well, this government the, this government has already started uh, changing the terminology uh, for those coming. It's gone back to where we were previously, describing them as irregular migrants. However, the previous government, as we know, passed legislation, the Illegal Migration Bill, which determined anybody coming across the channel was an illegal immigrant mm. and, as such, had no right to claim asylum. So the government is going to have to change mm. uh, policy and change the law to be able to ensure that people can actually claim asylum again so and are not illegal immigrants. Presumably on that then, uh, Labour are going to have to change that law. So they're going to have to essentially repeal the Illegal Migration mm. Act. So in the next few weeks, or however long it could be, that's one to watch, that Labour are basically going to repeal the Illegal Migration Act, we think. Well, if they don't, then they leave themselves open to a challenge from the other side. We say that you can't do this because a law was passed that says anyone coming across the channel by regular means is deemed illegal and therefore is not uh, eligible for uh, an asylum claim. So it'd be interesting to see uh, just how they get on and whether they have to amend that law once again. It'd be quite interesting to have a, a load of right-wing immigration lawyers, wouldn't it? <laughs> see if they, see if they, actually, uh, they actually brought a court case to say you're not adhering to the Illegal Immigration Act, which would be fascinating. To well, watch. indeed. Um, Goodness me. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Mark White, our Home Security editor, editor, for taking us through all of that. Yes, indeed. Um, look, just before we go to our, our next guest, I, I think it might be interesting just to hear a little bit from um, a home office uh, minister that we had, um, someone working uh, who's in the home office, just to try and sell this to us, right? Because uh, basically they are now going to have to try to sell this idea that um, illegal migrants are going to be kept uh, in detention centres for longer and then 14,500 of them are somehow going to be deported just magically. So here they are. We need to see this action taken, working alongside uh, Europol and our international partners so that we can see this action being taken that's having then an impact on what we're seeing on our borders. But it's also really important that we see enforcement and that's why we're increasing as well over the next six months a surge in returns because it's really important that those who have no right to stay are also removed from our country. And just in the last six weeks alone, we've seen nine flights Flights, nine return flights, including our largest ever chartered ret charter return flight, with over 200 people returned to their uh, country of origin who have had no right to stay. OK, well, uh, let's introduce now human rights lawyer Shoaib Khan. Shoaib, great to see you. Thank you very, very much. So, Labour have set out these particular plans. Will you be bringing a raft of lawsuits against this? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, considering the situation as, as far as we know right now, um, as is usual, um, all we have is this rhetoric, uh, slogan. We don't really know what they mean and how they're going to do it. So we know what the target is. You know, we're going to be uh, deporting or removing the largest number of people ever within this period. And we, does anyone know how they're going to do it? Um, so I think, you know, the, that's the whole point of it, isn't it? Um, but also, I mean, I think other than the specifics of this policy, the whole point is, I mean, I think it's quite ridiculous, especially considering a new government that just come in. Considering the past 14 years, we know, you know, the Home Office, so many other government departments, immigration, asylum, Everything was in total, you know, you know, quite chaotic, um, you know, quite destroyed in many ways after the Tory left them. So I think Labour needs to take its time. I don't think anyone would blame them if they took a few months to come up with this sensible, workable um, policy. They shouldn't just be saying, oh, OK, we got rid of Rwanda. So before the media and other people come out... Well, sure, all, they, all they're really saying here, all they're really saying here is that they're going to try and deport... 14,000 people, which is something that governments have been at least trying to do 
for years and years and years. I mean, I don't see how this is the yeah. diving in head first to changing things dramatically, is it? Um, no, it's, that's our point. It's not changing things. But we know that, you know, Theresa May, Amber Rudd, you know, the list of Preeti Patel, Sajid, everyone just kept saying these things and none of it happened. And that's my point. Mm. How are you going to do it? We know, you know... I, I mean, sure, do you think the government Rudd, should be trying to deport people who are here illegally? Um, well, what it needs to be doing is set up a humane, fair, right. um, respectable, reasonable system. If at the end of that, yes, someone needs to be removed, then yes. But the whole point is, if we're going to say, you know, within six months, we pledge to remove 15,000 people, then we know what's going to happen. Five months Mark on, White just told us month. that most estimates say about 1.5 million people are in this country illegally. So 14,500 is just a, a tiny, tiny fraction of that. Um, I, I don't really understand but, the point you're making. No, the point I'm making is it's going to be the, you know, the, the, the easiest people, the people who can easily be deported, and that's what they're going to go after. They're not going to deal with any complex cases. They're not, you know, anyone who they think either doesn't have the rules, resources to bring a legal challenge, someone who won't be able to fight against the Home Office. Those are the people they will be targeting. People just arriving in the country, for instance. People just arriving at airports. You know, if a thousand of them get deported, students who just arrive in the country and oh. they get sent back to the countries, that's a thousand. And just 15 more times you do that, that's the target met. But has it actually made any difference? Okay. That's the whole point. Oh. They're just going to be going after the easiest cases. And oh. that's why I think these targets are ridiculous. The point is, take your time, set up a workable, humane system. OK. All right, Shoaib, thank you very much. Take care. That's Shoaib Khan, yeah. a human rights lawyer. Can I just say one thing very, very quickly before we go to our next guest? Go on, I think sometimes the psychology of some of these human rights or immigration lawyers is a case that's just happened literally in the last couple of days where an asylum seeker has been jailed for attempted murder after stabbing his own solicitor, OK? And that solicitor is quoted as saying that he feels sorry for that particular individual because he had a complicated five years of residency applications and he would have been granted permanent residence had he not stabbed him. And you think... What is the psychology of some of these people that are... Well, that's working... an extreme case. I've got a working in the legal in the legal profession when it comes to this. I, I think that says a lot. But... I mean, I, I would agree with the show that, that targets can be a bit pointless, um, but the idea that they should just take their time and spend years and years and years consulting on these types of things is for the birds. Mm. Um,